My name is uh, Dr. Andrew Dobo and I'm an EMDR therapist. I'm also the author of Unburdening Souls at the Speed of Thought. My name is Leslie McQuirk. I'm the author and illustrator of 20 children's picture books. I also teach workshops in creativity and I'm a professional astrologer and I believe greatly in the power of EMDR combined with astrology and I have a new book coming out uh, with HarperCollins called The Power of Mercury. These clients from Vera would come into my office and they would say that their astrologer referred them to me. I've never met with a astrologer. I don't know anything about astrology, but they would come in here and they would speak this kind of astrology language and they would say certain things and then all of a sudden, you know, they would then say, so therefore, because my moon is in this house or how, whatever the language is, and they would say, so therefore, you know, my mother liked my brother more than me and they, oh, so I didn't know what any of that other stuff meant, but when they said that, I said, oh, you're not good enough. And when we do EMGR, we need an, an image and a thought. And the thought is all, almost always, I'm not good enough or I don't matter. So, so they would speak this astrology language and interpret it for me, and then immediately I knew why this woman who I've never met was sending people to me. And this is the kind of thing they don't really tell you in graduate school that you, you know, might be a resource for an astrologer. So I found that extremely interesting and they were really fun clients to work with and I think I was able to help them. And this, you know, from that beginning I, you know, have, I got to know, you know, Leslie. And so a lot of people think that astrology is fortune telling and one of the things I'm trying to do with the book that I've written, The Power of Mercury, is to get it away from that and, and to get people to understand that it's just an imprinting tool, it cannot predict the future. And can be used that way, which is an incorrect usage of it. Just like a knife can be used to cut bread or can be used to injure somebody. It's the intention behind what you're doing with the particular, the gift of astrology. But it used to be that you couldn't get a medical license unless you knew how to read an astrology chart. And the Hippocratic Oath, which all doctors take, most people don't realize that part two of the Hippocratic Oath, which they left off, actually states that any man who practices medicine without understanding astrology is not a doctor, but a fool. So somehow or other that got left off. But I believe that if given the right birth date, time and place, I'm 95% accurate with understanding the imprinting and the wiring of a person. I can't predict what's going to happen to them. All I know is what they're here to do, what their human design is. So there is a deep history and a deep correlation with astrology and medicine. It's just been severed. So by working with you, you had no idea about astrology. All you know is that the people that I was sending you or continue to send you... Makes had, sense that they're here. Yeah, because they want to get better. Right. What, what I think is so interesting about EMDR is that for me, it's a physical way to change what I see in an astrology chart that people are born with. That it's an owner's manual. It doesn't determine what's going to happen in your life. It just gives you the wiring. So when my clients would come in to see you, they would be literally talking about certain things I saw on the chart that were hardwired into their brain. And I know from doing EMDR myself that it's the only technique I know of that can actually go in there and shift it. So the analogy I give is that we're born with a certain song that we're playing and some of us get a needle stuck in the groove and it just plays over and over and over again. And you can do talk therapy all you want, which I did over 20 years of that, and it didn't really help me. It was only when I did EMDR that I realized that that needle stuck in the groove could be literally lifted out and you can break the patterns, which astrology just shows what the patterns are. So the people that I would send to you, I would say, go see Dr. Dobo, work on these patterns that you've got here. And they would speak in that astrological language. Right. which you knew nothing about, but... No, they still bring me those, the chart, you know, with the red lines and all these weird symbols, and I don't know what it's it still <laughs> Leslie says, I, want, I could teach you how to do this. I said, I know enough ologies. I don't need don't another, need, yeah, another, another take astrology. You, take you 30 years to learn how to do <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, But it no. doesn't matter. You don't even have to know. As long no. as my clients, if I can tell them what to tell you. So what's really cool about astrology is that I can, in one 90-minute session see things that could take 10 years for a therapist to figure out because it gets right to it. And unfortunately, one out of three women has been sexually abused, which is pretty much the same as the national average. That's what mm -hmm. I'm finding in astrological, you know, charts. The patterns are the same. So there are a lot of cases where I'll see people who have been in therapy for five or 10 years, and then they don't even 
they don't even know what's the matter with them. They don't know what the problem is. And a lot of times these traumas happen before the age of five and they just discount it and think it's no big deal. But it actually is huge because that's, you know, one of my things is that it started at age five, which according to one of the guys um, that I like a lot for trauma is that Peter Levine who talks about healing trauma. If it happens under the age of five, it's very physical. You can talk about it all you want, but it's actually in the brain hardwired. So that hardwiring, like some of my clients wonder if that doing EMDR is going to change their brain. Like, are they going to be a different person afterwards? It absolutely changes their brain <laughs> and it changes their view of the world. It changes the way they engage the world and it changes the way they allow the world to engage them. So it changes everything. When we do EMDR, there's no talking during the process. EMDR stands for Eye Movement Desensitization and Reprocessing. It's a big long name for EMDR, but basically we just buy, <clears throat> we stimulate the brain bilaterally while we think of an upsetting memory and we have the negative belief that is paired with that. So bilateral stimulation is this, you know, except we have machinery now that we use and it's a little more technical. So it's nothing very dramatic. But when you think about an upsetting memory that still upsets you, even if it's a 20-year-old memory and you still get upset by it, then the idea is that the information is stored pro improperly. It's not stored the way it's supposed to be stored. And EMDR, for some reason, is able, that bilateral stimulation jump starts the process and sends the information where it's supposed to be. So in a way, it, it defrags your psyche. It just sends this information where it's supposed to be and then you're a much at peace and you're, and you're functioning optimally. Just to say a few words about the patterns, you're absolutely right. The, the template, the, this idea of the negative belief, for example, I'm not good enough. Um, I mean, I tell a story in my book of a woman who her father was upset that she wasn't um, a boy. And so she, he hadn't even seen her yet. She's just on the earth for about a couple hours and already she wasn't good enough she's a disappointment she didn't matter all these terrible negative beliefs were present and she was only on the earth for a week so for a few hours so th those things started at a very young age and then once you sort of get this sense that you you're not good enough you start to engage in activities where you'll fail because you know how to not be good enough so I'll do this and I'll perpetuate this not good enough thing or I'll go work for less money than I'm worth or I won't ask for a raise. There are all, be, all these things where it sort of, you know, kind of infiltrate your life as this pattern, like you say, is the, is the, 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 the needle's stuck on this record. Oh, well, let me find a new husband. You find a new husband. He looks very different. This guy's so nice. But before you know it, you realize you don't really matter to him too much. So this pattern is this kind of insidious, um, the way that it works. But EMDR causes that cognition to shift to I do matter. And once that shifts, you can't go back to this world of I don't matter, but it's a bit of a struggle because these folks, once that shifts, they know they can't go back, but they don't know how to do anything except this kind of self-deprecating kind of behavior, which I'm sure you see in your clients. I have a friend right now who's in her mid-60s and she has a job where they repeatedly make her feel as if she doesn't matter. And she is wanting to do EMDR and unfortunately she doesn't have insurance right now to do it. But I keep talking to her about the fact that until we physically go into the brain and shift some of these patterns, it doesn't matter how smart you are, how aware you are, it's a physical thing. And that's why in the astrology chart, when I see things in the wiring system, it's not your fault that you were born that way. I mean, I think everyone's born with the perfect human design for them with whatever life lesson they're supposed to learn, but you can actually outgrow your chart, which you're supposed to do. And same thing with these patterns that people have. This friend of mine, she definitely has that core cognition if she doesn't matter. And she's just battling all the time to feel like she matters, but I keep trying to tell her, it's physical in your brain, so just be patient with yourself. You've got to go into the brain. Sometimes you've used the analogy of going up into the attic and you're going to clear out everything that's been stored there that's really getting dusty and old. You don't need it. It served its purpose for a while, but we've got to physically clear it out. It's like we're computers. You have to go in and clear out your computer. Why wouldn't you have to do it with your brain, right? Right.